Hello guys, this is Frank from Happy Coder and today in this video I'd like to talk to you about how to build a custom tech component using the React front-end framework. Just to offer a little bit of context towards what we'll be discussing today, I've been working on this personal web application that is meant to be a journaling app for you to write your day-to-day -day thoughts and activities. And for now, the name of the application is going to be Captain's Log. Not only is it a reference to the Star Trek franchise, but also I think by writing journals consistently every day, it has the potential of readjusting the course of your life and acting as a success coach to push you towards the right direction uh, to help you reach your goals. Currently, I've been implementing a theme that is really inspired by the interface of the Kindle e-readers and I intend to name this theme as the e-ink theme and the end goal for the theming for this project is to use styled components so that based on the user input parameter the user would have the ability to toggle between several different themes and what I would like to talk to you today is the tag component within the editor window and as you can see I've been using the Figma design software to help me lay out the design specs for me to be implemented into code so in the main entry editor window you can see that there's a tag input area where you can label your entry with different keywords or different tags so that after the entry has been inserted into the database you could query different entries by inputting the text that you're searching for. If we take a look at the live example, you can see that this is the text input area and we can potentially label our entry with a couple of different keywords such as React, Angular, and as you can see that each time when you hit the comma key, this little tag component will automatically pop up and the input area will be shrinking in size so that you can keep adding more keywords. And I would like to share with you how I've been implementing this component. All right, so if we take a look at the code base, you can see that within the main editor, we have a text input area, which is this div element. And inside of this div element, we have three different entities. And the first element is going to be the icon, which is this guy over here, which doesn't really have any real functionalities. It's just here so that the user have a visual indication to let them know that, oh, this is the area where you're supposed to input your tags, your keywords. And the second element within this input tag input area is the tag container, which is going to be this guy over here, which is really just a div element that uses a map array method to map the tags array into individual tag components, which I've already defined in Figma as this little guy over here, which is this rectangular with the uh, rounded corner and a close X icon within it. And the third child within this tag input area is the input element in which the user is supposed to be typing in all the tags and each time each time they, when the user hits the comma button is the front end code base is going to do a couple of different things the first thing is that it is going to add the string element right before the comma so the word right into an array which is called tags and like we discussed before this javascript code over here is going to take each individual string element within this tags array and map it into the tag component. And the last thing it's going to do is that it's going to reset the value of this input area to be an empty string so that the user could input new strings again. And that's a high level overview of what the code base is doing. Now let's take a closer look at the front end code. So if we locate the input tag that is doing all the work that allows the user to input the tag strings. We can see that it has a on change event handler that wires to the on input area change method and we've already defined a react reference so that this whole thing 
has a ref of tag input. So now let's take a look at the on input area change function definition. What it's doing is that it takes in a parameter, which is the event target dot value, which is the string that is currently being displayed in the input area. And um, it's defining a new element called new tag element. If the last character of the input area text is evaluated to be a comma, it's going to assign the string element that is from the start all the way to the character before the comma, which is really the string that we need, and assign it to the new tag element that we have just defined. Then it's going to reset the value of the input area to be a empty string. Remember, we have already defined the input area to use the react.create ref and give it the name of tag input is yes, somewhere right here. And last thing is that it's going to use the set text use state react hook that we have defined at the top of this component to push this new tag element string into the text array while retaining all the previously defined tags that we have already been pushed to the text array. Like we have discussed before, this piece of JavaScript code is going to take the newly transformed text array and map each individual string element within this array into a tag component. And now let's take a look at the tag component definition. It's fairly simple. It's just a functional React component that takes the tag to be its prop, and it's going to be faithfully mapping out this props.text to be the text, T-E-X-T, of the tags that we're seeing right here. And the second element within this component is the image tag, the closing icon, which if we click on it, is going to remove the tag from the array of text that the user is currently seeing. So that if we click on the right, it's going to remove that particular tag from the tags array. And how that was implemented is that in the editor component, we have defined a function called uh, call tag from array. And this method is going to take a string element as the input parameter, and it's going to run a filter array method to remove this particular array element from the tags array that contains all the texts that need to be mapped into each individual tag component. And when we are mapping out the tags component, obviously we need to add it to the props, give it the name of call tag from array, and within this tag component, we wire it to the onclick handler of the image tag, which is the icon, so that each time the user click on it, it's going to execute the props.call tag from array, passing in the text that we would like to remove, which is really props.text. So that's the walkthrough of the code. Now let's try to implement what we have just seen in a brand new project. All right, guys, I've just went ahead and created a brand new React project using the Create React app and gave it a name of text project. And now let's try to replicate what we have just seen in my personal code base for the journaling app. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a div element and give it a name of app, make this lowercase and this one to be app tag area following the BAM convention. And we're going to do a couple of things. The first thing is we're going to create the first children, which is the tag container element, which is going to contain all the tags that need to be mapped into each individual tag component. And the second child of this container is going to be obviously the input area, which is going to have a type of text, name and ID. Let's just leave it as blanks for now. And let's give it a save. And as you can see, the first child is invisible because it doesn't currently contain anything. So now let's try to define some use state hooks so that each time the user inputs something within this input element is going to be added to the text array. So we're going to do const 
tags and set tags using the use state hook and the initial state is going to be an empty array and the second thing is now we can add some code so that when the tags array isn't empty it's going to map whatever string is inside of the tags array to the front of this input element and for us to do that we're going to do tags.map for each tag string element now let's just return for now a div and it's going to be uh, tag now let's try to implement the on change event handler so that each time the user input a string and as soon as he hits a comma the text in front of the comma is going to be added into the text array using this set text method that we have defined using this use state hook. Let's name it text to text. And it's going to take in a input text, which is a string element. And it's going to set tags and it's going to first spread the existing tags array and add the input tags into there. And now let's implement the part where this method is going to check if the input text has the last character evaluating to be a comma. We're going to use an if statement if input text input text dot length minus one evaluates to a comma and then we can have different approaches if we just want to push this element into the existing text array that means that we're going to reassign the value of input text to be input text dot slice from the first character all the way to input that's surrounded with the parentheses input text dot length but I don't necessarily think this is the best approach I personally would prefer to declare a new variable like we saw in the code base let's name it to be new tag element so that we just assign the value of this variable to be the thing that we are intending to push into the existing array so that we're not overriding the value of this input parameter and inside of the set tax method we're going to push this element the next thing we're going to do is to wire the on change event handler of this input element to be a function invocation of the push text to text method that we have just defined and let's pass in the event and uh, the input parameter is going to be event.target.value give it a save refresh it and let's test it out and obviously what we need to do is that we need to change the slice to be input text length minus one and the reason why it's behaving this is because we have yet to reset the value of the input element each time after we have pushed something into the tag existing tags array and the next thing we're going to do is to give the input element a reference so that we're not doing DOM manipulation using document query selector or get element by ID. So let's try to give it a name. Let's call it tag input and let's assign it to be react.create ref. Move it to be the same scope as the component. And now we can assign the input element to be that ref. So we can do ref equals to tag input. And now we're going to move the set tags into the uh, if statement. And right before we're about to 
push the new tag element into the existing arrays we're going to reset the tag input dot current dot value which is the string that is currently being displayed within this input area we reset that to be an empty string so let's test it out react so it's working as desired and the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to do some CSS or SAS manipulation so that everything is being displayed in one row and horizontally. So let's open up the app.scss, which is being imported into the app.js. We put it side by side, delete everything that are not relevant. And let's try to target the correct elements. So obviously this one needs to be lowercase and we're going to do mm, this is the tag area. Let's try to use flexbox. So it's going to be display flex. For the text container which is within tag area and we do another percent dash dash tag tag container let's use display flex again as you can see everything is a little bit cramped right now so I think it's the perfect opportunity for us to encapsulate um, this functionality over here into its own component so let's now implement that architecture we're going to create a new folder called components and we're going to define a new component named let's just call it tag component and within the tag folder let's try to create a JS file by the same name and very quickly write the react functional component definition alright guys we have written the definition of the tag component and now let's try to wire everything up. So within the map method, instead of rendering a plain div element, now we can use the tag element we have just barely defined. And pass in the tag string to be the text prop. And obviously we need to import that component at the top of the file. So it's going to be components tag tag and inside of the tag component now we can render the props dot text to be the text and now with that done what we can do is we can add the style sheet for the tag component let's do the importation first before we have added the file as CSS obviously it's going to fail to compile because that file doesn't exist yet so we're going to new file tag.scss and we're going to do dot tag let's give it a margin left of 0.5 RAM and everything is spaced out a little bit we can do a very simple raggedy close icon we can simply just do another div and do this. It's being rendered vertically, whereas we need to make it render horizontally. So let's flex it. And if we give it a class name of tag underscore underscore close, we can potentially do this. So now the assumption is every time when we click on the X, it's going to remove this whole thing from the text container. So now we're going to implement that functionality. Let's first clean this up a little bit, collapse it, and define a new method. Let's call it 
call text from text and it's going to take in an array let's call it text to remove for the sake of clarity and what it's going to do is that it's going to run a filter method on the text array it examines each individual tag and retains all the elements that does not equal to the text that we want to remove so the assumption is after we have run the filter method on the text array whatever is left in the text array we want to retain and because the filter method returns a new array we can just simply pipe this up to the set text method so that it sets this whole thing which returns a new array to be the new array that we need to be rendered as text and now let's pass this method that we have just defined to the tag component let's name it again as call text from tag so that we don't accidentally make any typos and inside of the tag component we're going to be wiring that up to the on click event handler of the x icon that we intend to function as the close icon so when we execute this lambda function it's going to in turn invoke the props dot call text from text method and passing in the props dot text which is the text that we wish to remove and now if we click on it you can see that it's gone so now let's test it out and add a whole bunch of different texts let's do react happy coder Firebase journaling when we click on the appropriate close icons it's appropriately removing all the tags that we wish to remove from the existing tags array all right guys that's all I have to say in today's video I hope you found it to be informative and I'll be continually working on my journaling app and in the meantime I would like to elicit your help in the future if you see any web component any UI element that you found to be aesthetically pleasing or functionally interesting please send me a message so that i can try to study it reverse engineer it and i will be sharing my findings and tutorials regarding how to create them on this channel so we can progress together and with that said i'll see all of you in next week's video bye bye